Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'm going to be taking you guys through the paintwork on this Mazda 3 painted in aluminium metallic. The paint code is 38P as you can see in the top of the screen there. So we're painting down the entire side and we're doing a new door skin. So we're painting inside and out. What they've done is remove the outer skin of this door panel and then put a new one over the top of it. Now what we have to do is obviously seam seal the inside and prep the entire inside of that door up as well. We then wipe the entire door down with some wax and grease remover to remove any contaminants. And next up I've got my wet on wet primer in my W400 Bellaria, which I've been pretty impressed with how this thing's been pumping along lately. It's my wet on wet slash 2K gun. So any solid colors that I do, I'll be using this gun and it's, um, yeah, quite a good gun. You can see I've got that A&I regulator or air cheater valve, which is probably the correct terminology for one of them. I was corrected by one of my followers in a previous video. He said it's not a regulator. It doesn't really regulate much because it's uh, the air pressure fluctuations are really determined of what comes up to it. So a regulator is more the thing that you'll commonly see on the wall in a spray booth. In this workshop, it's actually on the other side of the wall, so you can't quite see it in this video, but that's got a diaphragm in it and it actually will regulate air pressures. So these cheetah valves are more used as a gauge to get an idea of the pressure settings that you have. So it turns out with that door, I did the first coat on the outside obviously first, and then by the time I'd gone around and done the inside, um, I had a bit of overspray land on the outside, so I just ended up burying that bit of uh, dusty, misty overspray with an extra coat of that wet on wet, and it worked quite well in this occasion. So just take note of that stand that I'm using. I've got a follower and friend from New Zealand, Ricky Sammons, and he said, he asked me, oh, is there any good bumper bar slash door stands that you know of on the market? And that one that I've got there is totally amazing, inexpensive. I actually got it from Jefferson's Paint Supplies, I'm pretty sure. It was either that or Bayford. Uh, from eBay here in Australia. I got two of them delivered for 250 Australian dollars, so that was quite cheap, good price, and they're a very basic stand, but they're effective. Sometimes the most simple things are the best. I use them daily, bumper bars and doors. You can't really fit bonnets on them because you can't flip them around, but we've got separate stands that we, ever, that we use if we ever need to do bonnets. So what I'm doing here is there was obviously those couple of minor repairs, just a small dent there that the panel beaters didn't fix. Sometimes I'd actually prefer that they didn't because they'll go and rip into it with a coarse sandpaper, make it so that I do have to use some 2K uh, sandable primer on it. But for this instance, we just put a little bit of fine filler in there, no pinholes or anything, whack a light coat of wet and wet primer over it. And what I'm doing here is I've just put a bit of standard thinners into that ANI R150 mini gun. Yes, it's a gun that I do highly recommend. They're an awesome gun and they get used quite a lot in my workshop. I've got two of them. I've got a 1.2 and a 1 mil setup. So previously I'd been told by one of the paint reps locally to use fade out thinners on those edges. One day I'd used it and maybe I didn't let it dry quite long enough and it ended up uh, crinkling up once I put the clear coat on. And I've since found out that it's not a recommended method because that fade out thinner sort of takes a while to dry. It's basically an extremely slow thinner and it's also got some other ingredients in there that sort of stop it from drying too quick and it's uh, not recommended to use over the wet on wet primer or more so under your waterborne base coat. That's really where you get the issue. It, you won't be able to see it when the base coat's on. As soon as you get that clear coat, it's just activated it and it's sort of, um, yeah, it, it's, it crinkled up on me. So I decided, look, I'm just gonna use some standard thinners. Once that's dry, it's dry and it dries quite quickly. Um, so yeah, again, that's probably outside of the recommended guidelines from Axelta, but if it works for me, I'm going to continue to do it. I can't see any reason that it won't work, but yeah, I'd sooner use that than the fade out thinner these days after what I did see have uh, happen on that job. While I was letting that wet on wet dry, I ended up going and put the black on that Land Rover Discovery bumper that you see up the other end of the booth. Now, because I put that wet on wet on that quarter panel down quite dry, it didn't need too long to dry. Obviously, film thicknesses and drying times are directly related. That door obviously needed a little bit longer to dry, so that door probably got the 15 minutes, and I've got the booth set to 30 degrees, so I've got it quite warm in there. So you obviously saw me put the base coat blender down over that fender. Now I've got the base coat color in my Devilbus GTI Pro. I've got the 1.3 mil fluid tip on it, and the TE10 air cap. This is my recommended setup and gun 
to use with this Chrome Max Pro. Most of you guys are probably aware that I've had a few minor issues with the mottling and blending issues of this Chrome Max Pro water system. I've just about got them nailed and this job to me proves that I have. As far as the mottling goes, the main thing you just gotta do is slow right down Keep a nice tight overlap and hold the gun back. I think they said 12 inches. I don't actually measure that. I just do it by eye, obviously. So about, yeah, 12 inches, they say. You can, yeah, just gauge by looking at where I'm holding this gun on this second coat here. As long as you get that second coat on, still fairly wet. They reckon you're still going for about 25% coverage, even on this second coat. So if it's not fully covered on that first coat, don't stress, even with these silvers, you should be able to get good coverage with the two coat application. I'm no longer putting the base coat blender in the color. If you go and mix a color like this up, it'll automatically select on the machine blending option. What you're doing there is putting 20% of that base coat blender, which you saw me put over the edge of that guard. You'll mix that with the color. All you're gonna do there is dilute the color. I don't recommend it anymore. As long as you get the color match nice, it should blend out quite well. Another thing I've been doing, I did a couple of test spray out cards with this base coat blender. I did one with straight base coat blender over a silver. So I've got a silver spray out card, covered half of it up, straight base coat blender over half of it, put a coat of clear over it, and I found that it would actually darken that color up a bit. And as I put more and more water in there, so TN800W is the product code that I was using there, as I put more and more of that in, it was actually improving it. So I was getting less of a dark edge uh, where that line is on that silver spray out card. So I found that the sweet spot for me anyway is two to one, so around 30% water into your base coat blender. You could probably go 20% fairly safely, but I've found for the moment I'm gonna be using the 30%, and it's been giving me good results. Hey, within a month I might end up changing it up a bit. I've got no doubt that it's not gonna be causing any adverse effects. Even one of the paint reps did say you're allowed to put a little bit of water into that base coat blender. I don't think he specified exactly how much. I think he might have even said five or 10%, so I'm going a little bit above what they recommended, but it's been working for me. It actually sprays out the gun a lot, nice because that base coat blender is quite a thick product so to get a, a wet coat over the entire thing you really uh, are deepening the color up a bit and then you go and blend in it you get a bit of a dark edge around it so yeah I've found that putting that bit of water in much improved results on those silver blends and as far as the model goes yep just slow down a bit so I have been using a little bit more product so I've actually found that I'm using more paint using this water base as compared to using solvent based paint. So rule of thumb for me was a standard size bumper bar. I'd be using 300 mils per bar. These days I'm more going on the side of 350 just because I have run out before and because you are going so slow with that second control coat that you need that little bit more material. Now don't forget when I say 300 mils with solvent, that's before putting thinners in it. So you're actually ready for use, you probably got actually 450 mils. Ready for use? Yes, you will use a little bit less paint with this Chromax Pro compared to any solvent range I've used anyway. And I've been thinking about, oh, how would I go if I was to go back to a solvent shop? And I reckon I would absolutely hate it. In the next couple of months, I'm actually planning on doing a waterborne versus solvent-based paint review, outlining the pros and cons of each one, and we'll end up with a winner at the end of it. I'll do it in bullet point, and you'll have a winner for each uh, specific stage. At the end, we'll tally up the amount of wins that each one gets, and we'll give the gold medal to one of them. Hopefully, us Aussies get loads of those gold medals at the Rio 2016 Olympics. This is one area that the solvent's most likely going to win, and that's drying times. As you see me there, using that duck's bill to help uh, dry that waterborne base coat. I've actually got some improved air blowers coming out from Spray Guns Direct. They should be at my shop early next week, so I'll hope to have them included in some videos next weekend for you guys. Another review and demonstration I'm hoping to get edited up this weekend for you guys is of these SATA RPS pot spray guns direct sent a box of these RPSs out for me so that I could do a review of these versus the PPS. I will say now that there are actually a few advantages of these over the PPS. The main two points on the RPS versus the PPS are flow rate and cleanliness because these RPS are a fully disposable system. You don't have the hard pot or the hard outer casing of the PPS system. But we'll focus on that in the review and demo and we'll continue on with this 
job now. So the clear I'm using is the 3760S low VOC clear. It's one of the premium clears in Chrome Max's range. I believe it's actually only available in Australia and New Zealand, probably due to environmental conditions, UV ratings and all those kind of things. But I'm sure the rest of the world would have extremely similar clears with the exact same application method so it's a low VOC clear and uh, it's a two coat application and that's uh, one visit so one coat one nice closed coat followed by another wet coat job done uh, I have found that the there's a lot to say for the first coat if you go and put that first coat on really heavy you're just gonna set that orange peel up so this is a Mazda obviously I don't want to go and uh, paint it like a BMW or a Mercedes or a European finish so I'm making sure that first coat is a closed coat that's what we call it so that you can't see through to any of the base coat underneath and then the second coat you just follow that on uh, obviously depending on the kind of finish that you're looking for you will get a little bit of flow with this you do want to make sure that you don't get any big build-ups on edges I've had it happen before and it's prone to pinhole like so if you get those big build-ups and sausages we call them um, they're pretty ugly and you'll actually get little pinholes in them where it's built up and um, the only real way to fix that is to actually re-paint the entire panel nobody wants to do that there goes your profit margin on that job I found it quite an efficient clear I use uh, my rule of thumb is 130 mils per panel on an average size panel so when I was uh, calculating this job here I looked at it I said I've got one two three four exterior panels there's your 400 mils add your extra 30 per panel you're up to 520 and then I added an extra 100 mils for the inside of the door because that's only going to be one coat I've got another 200 for the bumper bar and as it turns out you will see at the end of this job I had three drops or maybe four drops of clear less so exactly on point with the uh, amount of paint that I'm mixing up this is not a cheap clear by any means I'd say it's a little bit more important to get your mixings right when you are using these expensive clears these clears can actually end up working out cheaper if not around the same price if you do an overall cost comparison the amount of jobs that you get done per can but you've definitely got an improved quality it's better for the environment you're not putting as much material on there's a lower VOC which is volatile organic compound so you're getting uh, less emissions into the atmosphere so it's a win-win as far as I'm concerned as long as it's used properly don't just go and smash one coat on leave it for 10 minutes smash another coat on because you're going to use just as much as you would use with a cheaper clear or a medium solids clear but what you'll end up doing is overloading the material you'll have too much material on there more wastage than what's necessary and especially on a silver car like this you'd probably start to notice a little bit of color difference because of the depth of that clear can actually change the color a little bit obviously your application times are much quicker when using these kind of clears so even if it's five minutes that you save even if it's just the five minutes in between coats that you do save well that's five minutes that you could be spending on the next job and these days the uh, panel shops are all about getting numbers done and every minute does count I'm actually much happier working in a shop like this than doing restoration work well I do like doing some of the restoration work I'm just uh, these days I just like getting in smashing them out never seeing them again sometimes those resto jobs after a month two or three months you just get over that car and you just can't wait to see the end of it it's great to be working in a good shop with all the latest gear equipment and materials and taking you guys along for the ride this is where I'm happy later on in life I think maybe in around 10 years or something I might start slowing down a little bit and doing some more custom and restoration work but for now this is where I'm happy the next thing I really need to do is get myself an air fed respirator these filters do block up quite quickly in this booth because they're a full uh, filter system in the floors uh, we have to change them out every five weeks but in between then even after two weeks you do start noticing the airflow uh, getting worse so I do need to get myself an air fed respirator and I've actually got one coming out from spray guns direct next week too so there you can see I've got two or three drops worth of clear left absolutely perfect mix as I say this clear isn't cheap so it's pretty important to get those mixtures right that guard there or the fender that was actually just a little bit of a freebie blend we decided to do the repair on that door came up a little bit further than what uh, I would have liked to blend into it you probably would have got some color difference there or just about guaranteed that you would get some sort of a color difference even if it's just from the clear coat 
changing the color as I mentioned before so that's why we just decided to mask that up and just do it whether or not the boss can even get that as a extra through the insurance company that's not really my uh, worry as long as the cars go out looking nice that's what I'm more concerned about this job actually came up quite clean there was only one bit of dirt in it that needed denibbing and that was in the quarter panel my apprentice who did the polishing he's been loving me working there the first job that he saw off the gun he goes mate I've never seen it before the whole time like there's always junk and stuff all through it previously with the other painters but it's all good now gunny's here gunny's uh sorting it out for him anyway that's it for this video stay tuned for the next one guys now you've seen this video get out there and paint some shit thanks for watching and this has been another gunman production goodbye